I feel like Cardi, my stomach hurt. Stummy hurt. I want to form my 21st. 21st. They got my savage like 21st. YouTube, it's Ethan Gates with Tanae back out of the game with another video. Um, today I decided to talk about why Paul George to win MVP for the 2019 season. A lot of y'all might not agree with that because y'all might be like, oh yeah, Giannis, oh yeah, James Harden, LeBron James. Um, I'm gonna give many reasons why Paul George should win MVP. It was crazy because to begin the season, I even knew that the Thunder were going to be really good. Um, when they dropped Carmelo Anthony and got Dennis Schroeder, and they added a little more depth to the bench, and then Terrence Ferguson is playing really pretty decent, and he's only like what in his second year. Um, he's developing a jumper, which he didn't have his rookie year. Um, Westbrook is still playing great. Um, he's really not like efficient, but he's still playing great. He can still come up and show up for the big games. Um, but Paul George has really shown up this year. Definitely my surprise of the year so far. It's not even an all-star break yet, but definitely my surprise of the year so far. Also, I want to be talking about trade rumors that are happening around the league this week. Um, Wesley Matthews could possibly go to the Thunder, which would be an amazing pickup for the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. Wesley Westbrook, Wesley Matthews, Steven Adams, Paul George, and then Patrick Patterson at the floor. Tobias Harris to the Jazz would be a really good pickup for them too also. We could put Ricky Rubio at the one, which he might likely get traded to the Clippers. Donovan Mitchell at the two, Tobias Harris at the three, Rudy Gobert at the five. They got Kyle Corver coming off the bench. Not really like a great player, but like, you know, he can knock down shots when he needs to. Joe Ingles off the bench, really good team. Also, the Lakers have offered Lonzo, Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, um, Zubac, a lot of like six people in a first round pick for Anthony Davis. That is not a good pickup for the Lakers. That would definitely ruin their entire team. And then Pel for the Pelicans, I feel like they should take that trade because it would definitely rebuild their team completely. Like they had Julius Randle, Jaleel Okafor. They can keep Jaleel Okafor. Jaleel Okafor has really been playing a really, really good basketball the past five games. Um, and they still got Drew Holiday. Just a lot of people that they really could like keep. I feel like the Pelicans should definitely strike on that trade and take a risk on Anthony Davis, losing Anthony Davis, and give him to the Lakers. Let LeBron take care of the situation because you were coming up at least a good, what, three players. Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, all 22 and under. Three core players that are really, really good. Can definitely help out the Pelicans. Definitely help out the Pelicans get to at least its playoff berth. In the next five years will be a really, really good team if they keep them all together. James Harden has really been playing amazing. Um, definitely one of my favorite players in the league. Always has been one of my favorite players. I just think this year is different to last year because James Harden really gets a free throw line a lot. When I mean a lot, I mean a lot. I think he takes at least like 20 a game, 20 free throws a game. And he averages about 40, like low, uh, high 30s, low 40s. Um, that definitely is a help for James Harden. Free throws is really a help for him. I feel like that's not going to really show up in the playoffs. Like, let's be real. Last year, he got clamped in the playoffs against the Warriors. He did have Chris Paul, but he definitely got clamped in the, uh, in the playoffs against the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals last year. The Warriors really didn't have nobody else to worry about besides James Harden, so that's really kind of why he really got, like, you know, targeted. But at the same time, it's not going to work in the playoffs. That was going to be called as much. Um, it's really going to be physical basketball. James Harden has had 27 points. Well, 27 30-point games. And it's been, like, continuous. 27 continuous games with 30 points. And it's only four games away from Will Chamberlain. That is really a crazy stat. Will Chamberlain is definitely one of the greatest scorers to ever play basketball. Had 100 before. Averaged 51 year. And it's, it's just insane. Um, last night against the Suns, he had 44, 8, 6, and 3. Three steals. So if you think James Harden can't play defense, he can never play defense when he wants to. Um, let's look at Paul George in his last eight games. His last eight games, he's had 37, 43, 37, and 6. 36 and 13, 23 and 11, 36 and five steals, 31 and 31. Um, that is really, really, really good. Paul George is definitely a great two-way player. 
3 and D player. He really can play defense. The whole Thunder team can play defense. You got Westbrook who plays D and Paul George, the top two le uh, leaders in steals in the uh, NBA. And then you got Steven Adams, a great rim protector. Um, you got people off the bench. Dennis Schroeder, a great, great perimeter defender. Terry Ferguson, a great perimeter defender. Um, they don't have Andre Roberson. I feel like that would really help if he does come back before the playoffs, which I think he will. But he can't score. That's the only downside, downside about him. He can play really, 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 really great defense. He just cannot score. It's crazy to see how far, far George has come from almost tearing his leg apart in the 2016 FIBA game to now. Um, many people thought he really wasn't going to be a starter in the West in the All-Star game, which honestly really caught me by surprise this year, like I said. But definitely a surprise this year. Um, I knew he was going to make the All-Star game, but I didn't know that he was going to be a starter. He's definitely the second best at his position in the West, 100%. Do not even bother arguing with me. LeBron James is better than Paul George. But after that, in the small forward position in the West, Paul George is definitely second. Um, he's really a great player. He definitely has a lot of perseverance for him to bounce back after that huge injury. Also, shout out to that man, LaMelo Ball. That man is a bug. Anybody who's sleeping on him, and ESPN, that is very disrespectful for you. You have to rank this man. Last night, he had 36 at 14, shooting 60% from the field goal percentage. Like, that is really crazy because y'all just think, all oh, LaMelo Ball just be chucking up the ball. LaMelo Ball just be cherry picking 60% from the field against number one point guard in the 2021 class, point guard Zion Harmon. Spire is 20 and one on the season, and the only loss is happening at day and flying to the hoop, which is really like, you know, a huge event. And you gotta be ready to play. I feel like they weren't ready to play that game, but you gotta be ready to play that game. That's all for this video. Let me know down in the comments who's gonna win MVP this year. In my opinion, like I said in this video, Paul George definitely deserves it. I feel like he won't win it, but I feel like he definitely deserves it, especially after all that he's been through these past three years. Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, right there. You know the deal. Um, I definitely will be dropping a lot more NBA videos. Like, share, subscribe. I can't tell you guys enough. I'm trying to build this thing up. Turn the notification bell so you don't miss none of my videos. Or we'll be uploading a lot. Thumbs up this video if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't like it. Let me know what you liked in the comments. Like I said, let me know who's gonna win MVP in the comments. I really wanna hear your guys' opinions. And that's all for this video. We out of here.